Hey guys, Caitlin here, and I'm about a couple weeks into my fellowship, and I've completely learned what it's like to be a new hire in a hospital. I've been through every orientation possible, employee orientation, new provider orientation, onboarding, hospital compliance, anything you can think of or any training you can think of, I've done it in the past couple weeks. And another thing I've been doing is shadowing some of the older PAs that are just finishing up in their fellowship. And we had a patient come in that had a neural complaint. And so I shouted her and she went and did her complete neural exam on this patient. And it just reminded me of how much trouble I had when I was trying to learn that neuro exam. So for this video, I want to give you the neuro exam that I wrote up that's condensed yet still comprehensive and will cover your basis for almost any neuro complaint. The neuro exam, in my mind, is different than any other exam in that you can take many different routes to test the same things. And in the beginning, I tried to remember everything. And in reality, I found that it just took too long to do in practice, and I didn't want to do five different tests to test the same process. So, just to give you an overview of what we're going to talk about, I usually start off with cranial nerves 2 through 12, and then I move on to the finger to nose test, and this tests the cerebellum part of the brain, which is coordination and proprioception mainly, and then I move on to sensation of the upper and lower extremity, strength, reflexes, and then I do the Romberg and pronator drift test. So I like to start my neuro exam by asking if the patient has had any vision or hearing changes. And usually the patient is pretty attuned to if there's any changes in these senses in the past 24 hours. And just by asking these two questions, you already covered cranial nerve two, which is vision, and cranial nerve eight, which is hearing. And next, I like to test pupillary reaction. I like to carry a pen light in my pocket to do this. It's also good for any skin changes. And then I test cranial nerve three, four, and six by doing the eye movements. And I tell the patient just to follow my finger. And I like to go to all four corners of the patient's periphery and making an X in the middle. Doing so, you will test all the muscles of the eye. So we skipped over five, and that is the sensation to the face. So I like to tell the patient to close their eyes, and then I tell them, let me know when you feel the touch of my finger. And I like to cover all three branches of the trigeminal nerve, and I do, I do so just like that. So next I like to test cranial nerve seven, which is innervation to the muscles of the face. So I like to tell the patient to open their eyes really wide and then close them really tight. Smile. And while I'm getting them to do all these things with their face, I go ahead and tell them to stick out their tongue and move it side to side. And this will test cranial nerve 12. And after doing so, we're already in the mouth telling the patient to do things in the mouth. I go ahead and tell them to say, ah. And as I do so, I make sure I get my pin light and I look at the pharynx and make sure there is a symmetrical rise. This will test cranial nerve 10 and 9 together. And after that, I tell the patient to shrug their shoulders and nod their head, which is cranial nerve 11. So the last five things on the neuro exam that I like to test are the finger to nose test, sensation, strength, reflexes, and then the Romberg and pronator drift test. And the first one I like to go with after I do all my cranial nerves is the finger to nose test. And I simply just tell the patient, touch my finger, and then they touch their nose. So it starts off with the patient doing this with my finger. And usually I keep it very slow to begin with. And then I start moving my finger. So they have to really know the depth of what they're trying to touch and the proprioception, and that is good for the cerebellum of the brain. 
So next I like to test sensation and strength together. So I start on the upper body by telling the patient to hold out their hands like so. And then I take my fingers and I just tickle their palm and ask, hey, do you feel this? And if they do, that's their sensation for the upper body. And then I put my fingers in the palms of their hands and say, squeeze my fingers. And this will test for the strength in their hands. And then after doing so, I will test their bicep and their tricep strength by pushing against my hands and pulling against my hands. And then I move to the lower limb. And here I really like to test if there's any foot drop. So I'll have the patient sitting on the table, my hands underneath their feet, and I say, press on the gas pedal. And so they do so with their feet, and then I go on top of their feet, and I say, now go up against my hands. And then while I'm there, I have the patients kick out against my hands. So that'll test the strength of the lower extremities. And while I'm there, I always tickle the bottom of their feet and say, can you feel me? So next, I like to test the reflexes of the body. And the patellar reflex is the easiest one and the most quickly for the sake of time in the ER to test. And if you don't have a reflex hammer around you, which I never seem to have, I will usually use my stethoscope. I will take it and I will bang this part of my stethoscope on the patient's patella, like so. It usually works pretty well and I never seem to have a reflex hammer on me and you can do that as well, just a little tidbit. The last things I like to do are the Romberg and pronator drift test. And these two tests are really good for stroke patients, so I never forget to do them on any neural complaint. And so this entire neuro exam, I've had the patient sitting. So for the last part of the test, I have them stand, if they can, of course, and feet together and close their eyes. And that is the Romberg test. And for the sake of time, like I said before, I like to tell the patient to hold out their arms, palms up, and that is the pronator drift test. Make sure you are surrounding the patient, keeping them safe as their eyes are closed for these two tests and making sure that their safety is put first in case they may fall. During these tests, the Romberg, you might see the patient falter and giving them a little push can test them even further. For the pronator drift test, you may see the patient dropping one arm as their eyes are closed, or you might see them also simultaneously pronating that hand. Now, some patients cannot stand as easily as others. So to expedite the process, I will just have the patient sit in bed and I will do the pronator drift test, which is still a really good sign if they are having a stroke. So there you have it guys, my personalized condensed yet still comprehensive neuro exam that still covers all the bases, but in a fast and effective way. Mm -hmm.